All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. We're talking about something rather light subject. It's not light at the same time. This is Social Square. We're just trying to find out essentially how people are doing out there. We'd like to find out from you. How are you doing? Considering you've been working from home, how is that turning out? And that is the conversation we're going to have in just a bit. It's the changing workspace. And joining me now is a lady who needs no introduction. She's been in the media for a while now. Joy Doreen Bira. We also call her JDB. She's a media personality and a strategic comms expert. Thank you so much for making time, Joy. And we have Ken Munua. Ken Munua is a psychologist just to make heads and tails of what is happening in people's minds when we're going through this particular period of COVID-19. And Joy, I'll start with you. So it's been about three months so far. Are you now used to working at home? How was that the first time when you started working from home? <laughs> okay. Um, so before COVID-19, I was working from home about two, three days in a week. And for me, I think by the time we got into the corona disruption, I had already pretty much uh, figured myself out because uh, for those days that I used to work at home, I had to readjust now mind mindset-wise because um, at that point in time, I really had to now organize myself. The physical meetings that used to happen uh, either on a one-on-one -on -one basis I had to now transfer those either to uh, Google Google Meet or Zoom or BlueJeans or Shack or Microsoft Teams. Um, but then, you know, the whole mindset issue of just now figuring out that we are no longer going to be meeting people physically, I think that is where the, the major issue was. But the transition from... Um, you know, office to now home was not that hard for me based on the fact that I had two days in a week to work from home. All right. I, at least for you, you had time to adjust. But Ken, the, the issue that Joy Doreen Bira is talking about, the issue of readjusting the mindset. Now, there's a difference if you are voluntarily adjusting your mindset or deciding to work from home. This one, we are dealing with a pandemic. What goes through your mind when you're sort of forced to do something in a different way that you're not used to? To let me use the balcony. Um, there's, there's a misconception that people who used to go to the office pretty early and leave the office late were actually workaholics. But you'd want to ask yourself whether these people were escaping from the reality of avoiding their houses. Human beings are naturally known to like comfort. And so when they are put in a discomfort situation, it becomes very sad for them, uh, a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety. And when something is unpredictable, human beings will always want to fight. And that is why, um, for starter, if you're told to stay at home, you'll always want to go against the rule of the government or against the rule of the company. And um, I'm, I'm still asking myself when we say that people are working from home, what about those jobs that cannot be done from home? What is happening to those people is that those people now are getting slowly into depression. And if we do not take care, we are going to see after the COVID-19 pandemic is that we are going to have so many depressed people who have to start from scratch. Um, it's, it's, it's generally well that people like Doreen have uh, been working from home and they were used to it. But what about the jobs that cannot be done from home? This is a sad situation at this particular time. And uh, the question also begs, does the government really know about these people who cannot perform their jobs from home? And what are they doing about that situation? Yeah, but Ken, also the other issue is the pressure that comes with working from home. It means how do you balance the work-life balance? And I'll also bring in Joy Doreen on that one. But then, Ken, from a psychologist's perspective, doesn't that then weigh down and bog you down? Because there's no difference between when you're working, when you're not working. You're consistently, consistently on call all the time, you're on your laptop all the time. It essentially even spoils the quality time that you're supposed to have with family anyway. Yes, yes. And uh, if you look at the houses now, we have transformed the houses from uh, a home, a school, and now a job place. And uh, there's only one person with so uh, very few hours to do all this and also offer themselves some entertainment. So the pressure is really too high um, for, for the parents to, to know how to balance being a parent first and a teacher and also answering to the calls of the office and uh, some jobs that need to be done. So the pressure is really too high, and um, there are people who are not able to handle this, so they are resulting to other not-so-good uh, behaviors to cope with all this. All right. 
Jaderin, how are you balancing the work-life balance? I won't ask you that other question, but I'll keep it at the work-life balance. All right. Um, it really requires a lot of discipline because without discipline, it's really hard to balance it all out. So before uh, COVID-19, there was a specific time maybe I used to get up. And now that timing had to change because in between there, you also have Zoom classes for the little guy um, who is about five years old. So they have Zoom classes, I think, from about 10 a.m. to no 9 a.m. to about 11 a.m. So in between there, if you have any work that needs to be done, that will have to be interrupted. So what I did now is to turn around my work schedule and say, if he's having Zoom classes within those hours, then I can work either early in the morning or later in the afternoon. Um, that, that's when I'm going to have to work. But it does require a, a certain level of discipline. Um, responding to emails now, it, before, if I used to take maybe, I don't know, 10 hours, now I can't afford to do that. Um, I have to respond to emails immediately because in these times we are really um, dealing with immediate kind of response uh, situation. Also, I think that another thing that has come in really handy is the fact that uh, we've also had to upgrade skills during this time. So striking that balance as well has, has had a lot of impact, positive impact on my side. Um, and then there's, of course, sharing out the duties with my partner. If, say, this week <laughs> I'm the one doing the Zoom classes with, with, with the kids, then the next week he's also going to take part. So he has to figure himself out and say, um, maybe I will defer some of my work between those hours and, you know, let concentrate on the kids for, for that specific time. So that has helped in a way. So when he's having the classes, I'm able to work as well. Um, in terms of taking care of the most immediate or emergency work, one that requires me to get out of the house, um, especially maybe doing stories or doing some research, um, then I have to plan myself like say two days before and make sure that I spend as little time outside as, as is possible. Yeah, but Joy, how is the confinement working? Because now you and your partner and the child are all in the same space for quite a long time, uh, long as hours. Of, so, so is there some level of friction? You don't have to get into the nitty gritties, just, <laughs> let's just talk about the generalities. Well, yeah, you know, when you have, especially for the kid, he was, um, I think he was having some sort of cabin fever because for them, it was even worse. They're not allowed to get out at all. Um, so for us, having him, having to let him deal with that cabin fever at some point would have to walk him out of the house, take a walk maybe for 15 minutes, so he doesn't really lose it all the time because he was starting to get emotional at the age of five. So um, it was better for us because we would handle it better. Um, but then, of course, there's that tension that comes with, I need to go out, but I can't go out at, at, because of the timings. And then when the curfew time was still 7 o'clock, it, it was crazy. Um, thank God. <laughs> right now, it's about 9 p.m. Yeah. Um, so now, if you're caught working late outside of uh, the house, at least you know you have some hours to rush back home, uh, run some errands, and finish up on whatever it is that you have to do. So... Yeah, now it, it's a whole lot better balancing out. It, it has made planning inside the home a whole lot better. Yeah. Um, it made us realize uh, some of the expenses that we didn't need. Um, now we can do away with those and now channel these fans to something else altogether. Is there a journey of rediscovery of some sorts? Because there's, there's two sides. Either you're thinking, I can't believe I married this guy, or you're thinking, oh, he's not a really bad guy after all, now that I'm getting to know him. Actually, maybe, and uh, you, you do mention a good point there, but <laughs> no, um, I think it has also led to discovering more about personalities in a good way. I think now I get to know that uh, he doesn't like beans, he loves chicken, <laughs> um, and so if I give him beans for dinner, he's, he's going to have a problem. Um, but then I also know that it has helped us now, like, bond with one another even more. Uh, we are agreeing on uh, certain aspects of, of, of managing the home uh, way better than we used to before. We are having all these conversations uh, with one another as well and involving the kids in these conversations. We're yeah. even educating the kids on finances. So I yeah. think that that's a really cool thing. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> so Ken, this could work out either way. For, for JDB, at least now, they, they, there's more camaraderie in the union. But for others, it's the direct opposite. Yes, it, it all depends with how you adapt to a situation. People who take this as a learning uh, curve will get to learn quite a lot. Partners who never used to spend time together, this is the ideal time. I guess the, I guess the biggest gainer in this situation are the children who never used to see the parents as often as they would have wished and spend more time. And so the children are really enjoying. Um, my, mine would, would tell me before seven so that I can come home early and we have dinner together as a family. But for people who took this on the extreme end have found that they have too much time and too little to say. My advice would have been, they, this could have been the start of their dating all over again. To start learning each other, for parents to start learning their kids and what their kids love, for parents to learn the new curriculum. Remember, CBC is uh, giving some parents some headache because we do not know how to go about it. And, and children can really teach the parents this time. So it depends with how you take the situation. You look at it in a positive manner, it educates you. You look at it in a negative manner, it brings you down. Yeah. Mm. But Ken, there's some level of cognitive dissonance now. Because, for example, mm. when we are working from home, when mm -hmm. all of a sudden everything is okay mm. and you need to go back to work, there's some level of suspicion that comes with it. We've been told even by the CS, you can get it, you can get it, anyone has anyone. it. So when you go back to work, you're, you're always suspicious of your workmate. But at the same yes. time, there's a transition. You've been working from home, now all of a sudden you're back to work. You used to be at work before. How does, what does that do to your psychology as a person? Again, like I said before, it's a, we, we adapt to a situation. Before you come out of it, it creates some discomfort. Now we are, we are getting comfortable working from home. You're not spending uh, bus fare. You're not uh, sitting in traffic. You're not uh, meddling with people and uh, some of your colleagues that you do not like in the workplace. And so you're getting comfortable. Now, if somebody starts to tell you that you need to go back to the office, the situation recurs where you feel as if somebody is trying your patience now because they are expecting you to be there for eight hours seated, whereas you are able to contain your hours, work for two hours, go out and walk. So it's like you, people will get paranoid. One, because um, of the stigma levels, like you have said, the, the CS has said, we are going to start treating each other now in a stigmatizing manner because you do not know who has the virus. We are going to be overcautious. Um, we are going to be risk averse that we do not want to go and uh, create some tension with our colleagues. And we are going to withdraw. There, there could be some situations that people, when they go back to the office, antisocial behaviors and occurrences will happen. Yeah. JDB, what goes through your mind when you imagine schools reopening? Because I know you're a parent then. You're thinking, so how does this work exactly? Um, well, for now, we've also been thinking, should we homeschool the, the children or should we take them back to physical class? Uh, but the conclusion has been that they do need the physical class for human interactivity because handling him at home um, with his little brother might not be the best idea. So, yeah, while we are tolerating and accommodating the, the homeschooling um, that we are now doing at the moment, we are also still open to the fact that uh, he still needs that human interaction in a physical classroom. So for us, really, that's, 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 that's a no, it's a no-brainer for us. So we are still thinking of taking him back to school. Uh, because we also want him to get over the cabin fever that he always gets every once in a while. Uh, we try to take them out, especially now that the curfew has eased. We will take them out and, well, they will not get out of the car unless maybe they're going to see their grandma. Uh, but then we will have to find other ways of entertaining them so they do not get as bored as they would be if they were in the house all of the 24 hours of the day every week. So yeah, that is helping. And now that they're able to see their classmates on, 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 the, on the online classes, it, it, it's helping a lot because now he can identify some of them and say, hey, that's my friend. You know, and then they're able to catch up as well yeah. on that uh, five-year-old level of theirs. So I mean, it's, it's pretty interesting. Are you, are you more productive now compared to when everything was okay? Or do you prefer the old system? 
I prefer it the way it was before COVID-19. My two days of work at home and the other days uh, of, of going out. So right now I feel like part of my work has been interrupted because uh, I can't travel anymore and some of the work that I was doing was out of the country. So that in a way has affected me, but I'm, I have had to repackage myself, Trevor, repackage, reinvent, and have some of the work moved online. Um, for instance, I now I'm doing uh, events online. So that is, in a way, making up for what I used to do before, which was physical events that required me to either travel out of the country or out of town. Um, but now I'm able to move those online, which has, has helped a great deal uh, right now. What about the economic impact of that? Because we are almost in the same uh, sphere of work. There's an argument that if you're doing an event online, then the pay is not the same. Definitely is not the same, but you would have to consider things like uh, where you're going to work from at that point in time when you're having that event. You're going to consider uh, things like research. You're going to consider um, your internet as well. Do you have the right infrastructure? Do you have, uh, are you using the right device? Do you have the right, um, maybe you would need a printer. So do you have the printer to print out the information that you need during the session? Yeah. So you really have to set yourself up uh, for all of that. Do you have the right lighting? Are you using the right uh, space within your home or are you being interrupted by the kids every now and again? Sometimes when I'm doing live crosses or correspondences, I, I have moments where <laughs> my son walks in and he's really having a tantrum. <laughs> and, and I have to like, you know, work it out. Either if it's pre-recorded, that's fine. We can do it again. But if it's live, I have to assume that it's, it's normal. All right. <laughs> and Ken, that's another issue that comes in because the children are also trying to figure out is mommy working, is daddy working, is he just chilling here and is just being aloof and doesn't want to talk to us. How do you explain to the child that, yes, I am there, but do not come anywhere near me when you hear me speaking to a monitor? The, the best part about children is what you want them is what they will do. So you tell them not to come near you, you know, that, that they will definitely come. So this calls for some pact. Uh, before you get into any uh, engagement and you do not want disturbances, this is where the carrot and the stick comes in. You have to learn when to reward, and when the child does something, you, you agree that for the next one hour, through a help um, in the house, that in the next one hour, if they do not disturb you, that you are going to give them a small gift. Now, this is the high time to start practicing that, because the rewards really work. And also when you punish, the children will also generally learn that um, at this time, if I did something wrong, mom or dad will have to punish me. Still, too, what you need to do is uh, parents can try to readjust their timing. What time are the children more productive? It is during the morning hours. Uh, so if we are doing our schedules, we do our schedules in the afternoon because children will start having uh, some moments when they want to watch the TV and not want to play more with the parents. At night, children don't want to spend more time with their parents. So if it is possible for parents to readjust their timing, if it is jobs that are not live sessions, then we can be able to do them later. It's the time for parents to sacrifice their timing. Oh, yeah. And Doreen, is that the way it works? Uh, can it work when you uh, talk to your son and tell them that uh, stay away from me in the next one hour, I'll give you a gift or I'll punish you? <laughs> Which, which one works the best? Actually, sometimes it, it does. I, I, the punishing, because he's walked into a Zoom call or a, a Blue Jeans call or Skype like this one, no, I, I don't really want to use that method. Uh, but yeah, he does walk in and I'll tell him, you know, yeah, the bit of using the gifts, yes, that one, I, I do use that technique. And it works sometimes, but it's not going to work all the time. And also, uh, Ken did mention something about uh, rescheduling at a specific time. So sometimes you are speaking to people in a different time zone. So if it's, say, um, 8 a.m. here, it's going to be a whole different time in some other part of the world. So sometimes there are those interruptions, and you can't help it with, with the kids walking in and out. So at some point, you just have to make sure that, yes, the help will be there to move the kids out of the room that you're using, but it's in case they walk in, you do not have to blow up in their faces, but just let them understand. Because sometimes I think I remember a moment where my son 
came into the room I was using and then he went on the TV to see if the person on the TV was the same person in the room. So he came back <laughs> to check and said, hi, mom. And I was like finishing up my sentence and I was just praying that he doesn't say anything else after that. <laughs> and and Reva, yeah. could, could, th this could be the time to use humor even to the people that you are communicating with. I mean, it's never that serious, as you introduced and said. We, we cannot punish our children for having a moment where they wanted to just say hi to the person on the other end. It's just like the way journalists go out there and they are reporting a serious incident and somebody at the back wants to wave and say hi. So it's, it's a humorous moment that we cannot avoid entirely. Yeah. But Ken, there's also the pressure of provision. We know now that most people have lost their jobs. But now yeah. spending more time in the house, does that exacerbate it more? So, for example, take a look at a couple. If, one of, if the man probably lost the job, but he has time to go out there and come back later on, compared to if he's lost his job and is right there with you, is it mm. worse that there's a bit of confinement and people are still losing their jobs as well? What does that do to the union? It, it's, it's generally affected. Um, cost has gone high. Like um, if you're working from the house and you have to do like Skype call right now or Zoom trainings and the company isn't providing even uh, money for your network service, you'll have to dip deeper into your pocket. And so the expenses of the house um, have been affected. I like the way Doreen has said that they had to go back to the drawing board and look at what do we need and what don't we need? But there are some things that we cannot avoid. We cannot avoid to pre provide for the children. Um, I, I think uh, most families will tell you that snacks uptake has gone really high. Food uptake has gone really high. Use of water has gone higher. Electricity has gone high. And so this is the time now that the couple need to ask, if you lost your job, an eight to five job, what else can you do? Have you seen a surge of uh, people selling from their boots? Um, car boots and uh, other, other people. I think we have gone back to what we were taught in primary school, that agriculture is the backbone of this economy because everybody now wants to go back to sell produce and products. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's the time to reinvent. I, I like the way Doreen put it. It's the time to reinvent and ask yourself, what can you do besides the, the job that you had? Yeah. And if not in the essential services, um, you need to ask yourself, how can you provide for the people who are in essential services who now cannot afford time to do what they used to do, like shopping and all? Yeah, but from a psychologist's perspective, where does the support come from? Because everyone is pressed in their own way. Most people are thinking, the guys think it's the lady who needs to support the husband. The husband is thinking, why, do, why can't she support me? The wife is thinking, why can't he support me? How do you mm. get that balance? Because everyone is dealing with pressure that is almost constant. Mm -hmm. Now, human beings are disturbed when their expectations are not met. And so to avoid disturbances, we deal with the expectation. It's the high time to start communicating and ask yourself what you can be able to do and what you expect your partner to do. This is the time now for proper planning. This is not the time to uh, think that your partner would be a mind reader. Because at the end of the day, the expectation of somebody else to do and not yourself will ensure that um, if they do not do, that is where the fights are starting. So this is the time for couples to start communicating and understanding each other. Like you have put it, um, it is expected that a man should be a provider. But what if it's the man who has lost the job and the lady is working? Where can the lady now be able to come and chip in? But remember, the ego of the man will always be bruised when they are not able to provide for their family. So it's the man to start asking beyond the job, what else can I do? Where can they help now the lady? with some of yeah. the jobs that she used to do. And yeah. uh, however you look at it, uh, some men must start now doing some jobs that they, they were not planning to do in their marriage. Yeah. JDB, how does the cookie crumble now that you're already in that setup? You've sort of found a way of making it work, but does it yeah. mean that your bandwidth of uh, holding a bit of backlash needs to be higher than usual? Are you supposed to be more sensitive now? Uh, yeah, it's, you have to be more sensitive now, especially if you're in a setting that has got children in it. You have no choice but to be as sensitive as, as, as is possible. Um, right now, I think 
Well, I would, I would say at the beginning, um, my partner and I, I think either of us was feeling like we're doing more uh, than the other. And so we had to sit down as well and, and, and have that conversation and then split up certain roles within the setting of working from home just to balance it out and say, you know, if I'm doing this, you can do the other. And, and that has, has helped, you know, make it a whole lot easier. And, and while we have a help in the house, or a house manager in this case, uh, we're trying now to lift the burden off of her because before she was not used to having us around all the time. Now she's having us around all the time. And so we have to also consider some of the things that we can take away from her in that moment so she's not feeling as burdened as possible. And also now um, trying to let her have a day either in a week or in two weeks that, you know, or, you know, just some time that, you know, we can let her rest as well. Uh, so she's not overburdened with the chores in the house. And that has really helped a great deal. It has put her in a better mood. Um, and we've noticed that she's now able to play around with the kids. And, and that is fantastic. All right. All right. Thanks so much for making time for us this morning. Joy Dorin Bira, media personality and strategy comms expert, otherwise known as JDB, and Ken Munua, psychologist. Thank you so much for speaking to us this morning on the issues around the changing workspace and what happens from there. And about the changing sphere of the workspace. And joining me now is an event MC and organizer. It's a name that you've seen everywhere. Chris Kirwa is with me now. Thank you so much for making time for us, Chris. So there's been a lot of changes in the workspace. How has it been for you, first of all? Uh, it's been interesting. You see, um, I know a lot of people talk about going to the office, but uh, in events, um, once you finalized with client and now you begin the process of uh, event planning. Most of the time you don't head to the office, you head to the site of the event. So um, we find ourselves during that time working from home sometimes or working directly at the event space. So obviously with now no events happening, um, we've had to stay at home. And that has been the most difficult thing to do for an events person who is used to being outdoor. Yes. Yeah. And how has that been affecting you, Chris? Because I know you're used to being out there, out there making things happen. Now all of a sudden there's no gatherings, there's nowhere to go. What have you been doing to readjust to those new realities? I, th I think the first few months we watched all the movies that existed in any channel. <laughs> um, we Googled everything and anything about uh, COVID-19. Yeah. We did a lot of uh, WhatsApp calls, a lot of Skype, and we we discovered uh, that we had neighbors uh, because <laughs> of the nature of the work that we we do. We rarely meet with our neighbors because when they are leaving at around four, for those who, who are early risers, that's the time some of us are coming home from an event. So we never used to meet with our neighbors. Yeah. Uh, now yeah. we are. We even know our neighbors' kids. We even know. They are, who, who, who the little nephews and nieces are. Uh, we have, the, the, the dogs are no longer barking at us because <laughs> now we, it, it, that's the new normal, as in uh, we've had to really, really stay at home. And, yeah. uh, but, but it's not been easy because for people who are used to being out, yeah. and we, we are what we call experiential people. Experiential people means we are interacting with people when we are working with brands that need, um, experiential activities like yeah. sampling, um, music concerts, conferencing, team building, then all of a sudden that is not happening. So it's, be, it's been a bit difficult. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, it's, and then, you know, it's the source of income all of a sudden cut. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's no money and then there's no what you're used to. Because, you know, I think people, we, we enjoy what we do because it's more of a hobby yeah. and passion that brings in income. So how, yeah. how has the online events compared to the events that you are used to? Do they, how, how does it work exactly? Because we've seen people trying to hold online events everywhere on the internet. Does it work the same way? Uh, obviously it doesn't work the same way um, because now the element of uh, meeting has completely been cut off. So um, I think the first 
few people to do it, we all actually got glued to it to see, okay, how practically is this possible? But again, because of the social distancing safety protocols in place, uh, so even when you are setting up for that particular, um, you know, online activity, you have to work in in uh, in shifts. So if, if a guy is coming to set up the stage design, then the guys of audiovisual are not supposed to be there. Yeah. Then once it's finished, yeah. then those guys move in after the place has been sanitized. Yeah. Then you yeah you you know now you have to actually now supervise people to to observe the 1.5 meters distance to wash their hands to wear their face masks to once in a while you know sanitize their hands yeah um, people that will just randomly walk in into an event um, that that's not happening and obviously before you do that you have to get government approval to to give you a green light that you can actually do it and maintain maybe the recommended number of 15 packs yeah. per, per, per event. Yeah. So then um, you see now, if, if, if you are not very thorough previously when it comes to things like timekeeping yeah. and quality of the performance in terms of audio and visual, this time around there is no excuse because you're broadcasting to the entire world so then, uh, like you are Citizen TV, you are very big on on the quality of your signal of what you are being you are broadcasting. We had to do quick rehearsals before we came online. So for us, some of us who are used to just doing an event somewhere, it's the few people or the many people that have attended. It's not being viewed globally, so you don't really matter now. Quality of the broadcast and timekeeping is 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 not something you can ignore. Yeah. Let, let's bring in MC Jesse. MC Jesse is also with us here. Yeah? MC Jesse, I, is that you over there? And I see some things walking behind you. Is that a cat? She's got no MC Jesse, for a moment there, I was wondering, when we Muganga. So now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I should have pets. There's a difference between a cat and a pet. Eh? <laughs> so which one is that? Is a pet. A cat, a cat in a big in a pula panya. A cat in a pula panya. A pet takes papers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's good to see you with us. And how has the workspace changed for you, MC Jesse? Because I know you're also in the event sector and emceeing events, and so all of a sudden now we are all confined to one place. All right, we seem to be having technical challenges there with MC Jesse. I think it's the pet that he's talking about in Mekanyaga Wire. And let's bring in Chris Kirua back. Chris, this, now your cost of production is definitely higher, but looking into the future, how, how is the setup going to change entirely? Are you going to ensure, because I saw there was a, I think there was a gym in Australia or something that opened with pods for each and every person working out. It's no longer an open field. So for you, how is the setup going to change? What have you been thinking and what does that mean for the cost now? Because then you can't accommodate the same number of people in a particular size of tent. It means you have to come with more than one or two. Um, the, the cost, in some cases, the cost might not drastically change. It's that, that the item, when you have a checklist, the items that you normally allocate more resources, for example, food and beverage, uh, maybe you might need to allocate now more money to the safety protocols yeah. because you yeah. cannot now do an event without that. So, for example, you, uh, I, if, my visual, if I visualize how the next big concert will be, I will have two stages. Mm -hmm. So, and the two stages has everything that... Um, a, a concert has so from backstage activities to the parking slots and how the artist or performance will come in each one of them in their own cubicle yeah and then once the once once uh, trevor is performing on this stage b stage a mc jesse is on standby on the opposite stage on the other side because immediately you trevor you finish performing I have to I have to clear everybody and sanitize the entire stage as the other stage becomes alive. So you see, those are double costs if you think on those lines. Mm. Um, in terms of now the numbers, if we've been and you know engaging numbers like maybe five thousand people for a concert, uh, five hundred for a conference, you will 
you, you will have to work with less numbers. So, and then now hope that um, you, your, your broadcast signal of the same uh, gets you the other numbers or more. Yeah. Um, and, it's not, and now you don't know who is watching because uh, two guys might be watching from Australia, yeah. 10 guys in yeah. Trukana, uh, nobody in Mombasa. So it's, 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 it's very varied. It's not easy to, to do it. Yeah. So that's the way I see it. So there will be less numbers. Mm -hmm. More expensive, probably, in terms of tickets, yeah. uh, if, if you're paying. Mm -hmm. uh, you can imagine, we normally host um, exhibitions and conferences in a place like KICC, for example. So you might find 10,000 people have actually assembled in KICC. Now, that's not going to happen, because now, even if it happens, these people have to be, have to come in, in staggered. So instead of having 10,000 people, you'll have 1,000 people between eight and nine, then another 10,000 people between 10 and 11 that way. Yeah. So the call will go, and then the personnel that we guys will employ to be able to ensure people are following strictly the safety uh, protocols yeah. will be more. So whereas I will work with a crew of, in a concert of 10,000, maybe I'll work with a crew of 150 people, I might find myself working with 1,500 people. So that's, that's a higher cost that now has to be passed down to client. Yeah. And everything is going to be expensive. Yeah. So right now, having seen all the intervention that the government is trying to put in place, first of all, I know you're em you've employed quite a number of young people. What do you tell yes. them now and to ensure that they also survive? But what would you also like to see the government do, apart from the policies that you, some people are saying that are, they're boardroom policies, they don't really apply on the ground. Well, ground, what would you want? Uh, I'm happy you're asking me that question. That's a very important question. Our events, um, uh, gigs, we employ a lot of people on, 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 on short-term contracts. So if I have an event, let's say, on Saturday, uh, I will find myself recruiting what we call uh, setup crew, roadies, people who will come and work on casual basis, and you're paying them a certain wage. And because maybe I have maybe we have two, three events in a month. So it means those guys are earning an income within that month. And if they are not earning it from me, maybe they're earning it from uh, MCJC and their team or someone else. So at Kate Chris Limited, for example, so we, we will employ 100 to 150 or 200 people. Now, Trevor, immediately everything was frozen. The first people that actually experienced zero income immediately as in without it didn't even take three days were well, those guys because these guys these are guys you pay um maybe a wage so when um, the government is thinking about um uh the stimulus plan to be able to help people to come up on the event side of things we will really uh, like that us to be part of that because those guys depend on us directly and with us not having any events, then they also don't have an income completely. And you can imagine, let's assume we have over maybe 5,000 event planners in this country. Yeah. If each one of them employs between 150 to 200 people mm -hmm. uh, per gig, mm -hmm. you can imagine how many guys now don't have jobs. Uh, yeah. 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 All right, let's, let's bring in MC Jesse again. MC Jesse, your pet in Ashindi Kanyaga wire there, but I'm glad you're back with us. So <laughs> how has things changed for you, especially in the entertainment industry? Well, 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 uh, Trevor, uh, things have really changed. It's not the same way we used to do as Kiraid say, because uh, uh, first of all, we used to do events physical, like we depended upon uh, what do you call them? Congregations to Kongamano. make money. Yes. And so after that, we park talk up. And so now uh, changing from uh, doing events uh, like on the grounds, KICC, Carnival, and all that, and moving to digital. We are talking yeah. about uh, Instagram, uh, social, all the social media platforms. It's not easy. You can imagine for us doing comedy, and we are making you're making your laptop or your phone laugh, assuming the audiences are there. That's one of the hardest things I've come to find out during this uh, pandemic period. But uh, when it comes to now uh, monetizing that, 
I can say that most companies that used to depend on now actually are doing the same. They are actually moving into the digital space. And at least by the grace of God, we used to have numbers online, which means now that uh, they are coming for the people that have the numbers online. Yeah. That uh, is where now is our workplace. But uh, have, you been, have you been able to cash in on that, MC Jesse? Yes, 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 we have. It's, it's good because uh, it's just, I, I can't just mention the many clients that we have been working on uh, online, but I can say it's paying. It's, it might not be the same as uh, having the normal interaction kind of uh, event, but it's actually working. And uh, most corporates are slowly getting into it. What you can say is the publics are not yet paying for the digital space, but the corporates are. Okay, so what, what I was asking Kirwa just a few moments ago, what kind of intervention would you like to see from the government for the people you work with, the comedians down there? There is a stimulus, there's an economic stimulus package, but has it been tailored to suit your needs? Well, the government has tried, especially with the uh, Ambassador Amina's Ministry uh, for Culture and All, uh, they have tried doing that, but you can you you remember when they said they went to cushion artists with 100 million, it wasn't even easy to for the distribution of that kind of uh, that kind of uh, amount. But most uh, most government agencies like the Kenya Film Commission, I've seen them do a lot of uh, competitions for movies, and we still uh, fall under the the creative segment of acting and all that, and so. Uh, the stimulus programs that are done by uh, an agency like Kenya Film Commission are going to help artists now. And it's a call for those people who see uh, government advertising such opportunities. You should take advantage of it. Right now, they have a competition they are doing with a mobile phone. Yeah. You shoot, uh, you shoot a, phone, a, a film using mobile phone and you get a chance to win up to about 400,000 Kenya shillings. Trust me, Trevor... That's not something you just want to, you know, you, you want to take lightly. Yeah. And be sure such a program is for you as a creative to go and try. Because it, it costs nothing to do a movie using your phone. You just shoot with a nice phone and then you edit it and you send to them. That is what you can do as an artist who is not getting corporates to work with. So right. you take advantage of such programs because that is a way of government distributing uh the cushioning money yeah. to the creative industry. Okay. Gentlemen, we're running out of time, but I'll give you a chance to tell us how does the future look like? MC Jesse, for you, how does the future look like now? Well, it looks bright because this is a different kind of uh, space that we, ne we were never used to. This is uh, the digital space. And I can tell you, uh, it's not that costly. You just need internet and electricity. So yeah. government, if you can be here, Kenya Power, it will much better. And uh, also try to talk with the people that... Uh, I saw the president trying to make internet a little bit cheaper. Yeah. It hasn't yet happened, but I can say it's challenging for us, but it's, uh, it's one of the best things that have happened because we are looking into other options apart from the normal that we have been used to. All right, Chris? Uh, for us, I see less people, uh, less experiential activities. Um, what has always annoyed us most uh, when you meet the what they call the Z generation, the earphones plugged in, watching content online. Uh, unfortunately, all school us and everybody else, that is going to be the new normal because that's how uh, probably future of events is going to be the same way Olympics, Diamond League, you know, watching your EPL or whatever sports that you like. So content creation is king, like us now at Kate Chris, we decided, okay, all this wealth of experience, what do we do with it? As Jesse said, so now we are filming using our phones, uh, just showcasing event venues we had started, and now the event spaces are open, so we walk in, shoot, to show guys, and create a directory of some sort to, to say, if you want to do an event here, this is how this place is, this is what it can accommodate, this is a unique thing about it. So it's about... Um, new ways of doing things, but I see the phone you have on your hand being very important for all of us, because that's how probably we are going to be uh, attending events. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Chris Kirwa, there is an event organizer and also an MC, an MC Jesse, comedian and MC as well. That's where we leave it for now on this discussion of the changing workspace.